Now, what about once you place the pipeline, you put the patient on dual antiplatelet therapy, or those ruptured aneurysm, what if they end up needing a shunt? What, what, what can you do? Well, we, we demonstrated here that it is safe to go ahead and shunt the patient while they are on dual antiplatelet therapy, as long as you use a specific technique where the patient has already a ventriculostomy catheter. You don't have to drill a new hole. You go in, remove the old catheter, do a soft pass with a new catheter and tunnelize it. This used to be a taboo, a no-no before because of the risk of infection. They used to say the old thoughts that you need to go in a fresh area. If the patient has a ventric on one side, you go shunt the patient on the other side, you need a fresh clean area. Well, no, uh, it is safe to go ahead and do it. It is not associated with a higher infection uh, rate. And uh, it is even safer because you're not drilling, you're not uh, uh, inserting a new catheter, you're going uh, with a soft pass without the stylet in, in the old track. We looked at the cost comparison because nowadays the hospital administration is going to ask you whenever you're going to bring a new device or, in, or, in, or a new technique is, are you saving money? How much is, is the saving? And we looked at, uh, at how much is the saving with the pipeline. One turned out that uh, if uh, the aneurysm is less than 0 0.9 cc's, it's more expensive to use a pipeline than coiling. If the aneurysm is more than 0 0.9 cc's, it's, it's much less expensive to use a pipeline because you don't have to use all those coils. All you need to do is place a pipeline. Patient selection is important. This is the case of an A1 aneurysm that I treated with pipeline, but what happened is the pipeline was too long and I dropped the pipeline from the A1 all the way to the ICA. Whenever you place a pipeline like this, what we call here is you are jailing a vessel. So I jailed this MCA. And this was a bad judgment mistake. And what happened is I placed the pipeline, the aneurysm is gone, that's great. But do you see this lucency here? This is a thrombus. What happened is the patient developed an M1 thrombus. We had to go in and uh, give some intra-arterial TPA and the uh, 2B3A inhibitor uh, for that. Another case of a, a young patient with a large aneurysm dysplastic. The whole ICA is dysplastic. This patient was clipped and wrapped long time ago, but the aneurysm kept on growing. The patient came back, uh, we discussed all the options, and I thought that pipeline would be the best option, dropping it from the MCA all the way to the ICA. We did that, but 24 hours later, the patient became suddenly hemiplegic and aphasic, and that's the CAT scan. So you see here, there's a left-sided antiparenchymal hemorrhage. In less than 1% of the times, you can see that with pipeline. Again, we see it less and less, but uh, did the angiogram showing the stasis of contrast, and then six months follow-up angiogram showing really beautiful remodeling of the vessel uh, as compared to what the aneurysm looked like before. The patient had recovered much, but again, had some residual. Uh, some aneurysms will still uh, have persistent filling after failed treatment with, with pipeline. We looked uh, to see what's uh, the risk factor to have persistent filling after a pipeline. Turn out that older patients uh, above 65 years old, prior stent placement, fusiform dissecting aneurysms, distal and MCA aneurysms, if there are some side branches, uh, all those are associated with a recurrence rate and not the aneurysm not uh, going away with the pipeline. What about once you have an aneurysm that you treated with pipeline and you do a six months follow-up angiogram and the aneurysm is gone 100% occluded, how much do you need to follow up this patient? And this is very important. We looked at our series and turned out that you don't need to follow up uh, to follow this patient anymore. And those are the, this is something important because despite the fact that you treat an aneurysm and you tell the patient that the aneurysm is gone, with other modalities, you're going to keep on getting yearly MRAs. And this is uh, for the patient they're going to still stressed out about the fact that every year I need to get an MRA despite the fact that my aneurysm is gone. This is true with coiling. This is true with any other endovascular option where even if the angiogram shows that the aneurysm is completely gone, you, can, you need to still do a long-term follow-up angiogram. But with pipeline, with flow diversion, uh, once you, the aneurysm is gone, we yet have to see an aneurysm coming back. So it's really nice to be able to look at the patient in the eyes and say, you are cured. That's it. You don't need to follow up with me.
Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from NeurosurgeryTraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.